on YouTube. Ooh, doo, doo, doo. All right. And I usually have a co-host, but he's not here. Let's see. Meeting is now streaming on YouTube. That's what it's telling me. All right. All right. Hey, technology at work. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to this Justin News Comedy Club show. Yay! We got a great set of comics for you tonight. It's going to be awesome. In fact, in fact, if I'm smart enough, I could throw up the intro for this show and give you guys something to watch. If I remember, oh, it just disappeared. <sighs> well, so much for this. I don't know what happened. Uh, did I say technology is wonderful? Okay. Well, ah, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the days, the, the modern day technology just fails me some days. It was all set up and it was ready to fire. And it looked at me and said, you're a funny man. <laughs> That's how this works. Oh, you are not kidding, are you? All right, let's see. Because I like doing this and you guys are so special. Let's see if I can. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Cancel. One moment, please, as technical problems go on. Okay, we're almost there. Um, I'm embarrassed. All right. Anyway, okay. This is not going to work, is it? Is it? Okay. Where did it go? Oh, my gosh. It disappeared. I've never seen it happen. All right. So much for that intro tonight. We got wonderful comics for you. Technical difficulties on Zoom. How is that ever possible? This stuff works all the time. Oh my gosh. Anyways, we have a great set of comics for you tonight. And we're going to start off with some of, someone from Manhattan, Manhattan, New York. I've seen him on a few mics and uh, he's really talented. Please welcome to the stage, Matt DeWittowitz. Yay! Hey, hey guys. No, my name is a mouthful, but just get used to it. Uh, anyway, so uh, can you guys all hear me? Yep. Yep. Great. All right. Um, so I wanted to say that uh, I um, I recently broke up with my boyfriend, and no, it wasn't him. It was it was me. I mean, I uh, I woke up one morning and I was like, wait a minute, I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yes yeah, so uh yeah, so it's been sort of stressful it's been sort of stressful these last few weeks these last few months because of covid because you then realize that well okay my apartment's behind me so this joke doesn't work as well but you realize you're a total slob and that you really you know you're a slob when you start to lose things underneath other things and you have to <laughs> frantically search for them Without knowing, you're like, where is it? Where is it? Oh, oh, thank God. There's my refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I've and so yeah, so it's been mostly that. And um, one thing that uh, now I don't know how well. Now, speaking of stuff, I've been the elections coming up in around um, less than a month. Thank God. Ugh. And one thing I've read over is that is that they say that country club Republicans are 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 don't like Trump. For anyone who doesn't follow politics, that term country club Republican is used to refer to socially moderate wealthy Republicans. And OK, I guess that makes sense, given what's going on in the world. But. I don't know. That terminology just seems wrong. I mean, if you think about it, historically, aren't country clubs known for being ridiculously misogynistic and racist? Mm. I mean, like, it's like, oh, yeah, we, we don't allow blacks or Jews or Hispanics into our club. We're not spazzes about it. <laughs> None of you excuse me. I'm going to go drink three cocktails at 10 a.m. and pass out on the tennis court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, 
and I said, but like it also doesn't help that so many of our leaders are um are so elderly. Like Biden's almost eighty and and like the other Democrats and even the Republicans aren't that far behind and that it doesn't help. And it also doesn't help that millennials, people in their late 20s and 30s, they're still being treated like they're rabid children. I saw an article in The Guardian about millennia, about how they say this coronavirus has domesticated millennials. D- domesticated? What the hell does that even mean? Like, are, are we <laughs> rabid wolves? Like, like, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's just such an insane idea to see us as to see us as this objectified stereotype. Like, on over here behind this plexiglass is the endangered millennial. It survives on avocado toast and SpongeBob memes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're, they're talking about like these couples that are almost approaching middle age like like man who would have thought a 38 year old married couple in the suburbs would know how to mow a lawn yeah i know 38 year olds should 38 year olds should be should be participating in wet t-shirt contests and doing keg stands i should know i'm a 68 year old editorial writer i'm <laughs> hip and with it dude now watch me do this dance i learned on tickety talk <laughs> <laughs> so uh so then there was the oh so uh so um so I was I took a I took a nap earlier today because I have been really tired and I had some weird dreams and I realized that dreams are always way more coherent in fiction than they are in real life. In fiction it's like hi it's your dad. I know there were many things I never got to say to you when you were alive, but I must say it to you now. Whereas in real life, it's like, hi, I'm LeBron James, but also your friend Joel, and you're taking a math test right now. (laughs) Now go to your house that isn't really your house, lie on your giant bed, and talk to your dead grandfather about the vampire bats in his closet. (laughs) Okay, that's my time. (laughs) <laughs> all right thank you so much for that yay all right i thought i admitted my friend in but he's not here sorry my co-producer is not here i don't know what happened to him all right thank you matt we can find matt on facebook can you spell matt dewitowitz now if you yep. can spell as best as i said that i mean it took me some you practice. got it on the first try i was very very impressed <laughs> It helps that I have a wife as a bank teller, and so she's really good at pronouncing uh, last names. So okay. Kudos to my wife. Thank you so much. Yeah. My wife there. <laughs> but uh, he's on Facebook, and he's also got a Venmo account, Matt Dash DeWidowitz. Again, you got to spell that name. That's D A W I D O W I C Z. For the record, for the record, guys, if I could say one thing, um, if I'm trying to do stand up, I am considering a stage name. My middle name is Jordan. I'm considering going by Matt Jordan. Now, none of what he said is wrong. I'm just saying that I'm just saying that uh, in the future, I may consider coming up with like alternate accounts that use that name instead. Hey, I go by A.A. Ron. So just, just yeah. know that most people can't even spell that name. So your last name is a mouthful. And so <laughs> they can't spell Aaron. I don't know how they're going to spell DeWittowitz. Yeah, well, that's why I just that's why I'm you that's why I plan to use some kind of whenever I go to open mics, Matt Jordan is the name I sign on the sign up sheet. <laughs> awesome. Well future Matt Jordan, thank you. Let's all give him a round of applause for such a great set there. That was awesome stuff, guys. Thanks, that's guys. Awesome. Especially about the millennials. You know, I just came back from the zoo and they're so sad looking. It's just- <laughs> well, I'm a millennial. I just I turned 30 this year. Well, they are looking for more of you at the zoo. <laughs> uh, I know, I know. It's just, and to make it really ironic, I actually did go to lunch with a friend and I did eat avocado toast. That's just a coincidence. But uh, <laughs> uh, right. that's completely coincidence. See, it looked good on the menu. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's uh let's go to our next comic tonight. He's a cool guy. From New York City, please welcome to the stage, 
Bruce Lipsky. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Matt's talking about the millennials. I'm, I made up my own group. I call my group the perennials. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned 65 the other day, and I looked in the mirror, and I said, gosh, I look like an old clunker, an old automobile. This body is totally out of alignment. My rear end is making funny sounds. My hose is leaking, and my ball joints are both dried up. <laughs> I said, oh, I better get Mako. Mako says, oh, no, you better get Medicare. <laughs> And when I my time earlier on, if I had a leak in my house, I'd call my plumber. Now I call my urologist, and he's 50 bucks cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was dating uh, in the younger days, I, when I used to go dancing. I used to go bust the move. Now I'm afraid to take my wife dancing. I may bust the hip. <laughs> and getting older is tough. I'm starting to forget things. I swear my phone matches as a better memory than I do. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I've also been noticing lately that I'm starting to blow some of my comedy punchlines. I hope I'm not suffering from PE, <laughs> premature ejaculation. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, know, you know, I have elderly parents. So it's really hard. I got a call from my 87 year old dad the other day. He said, Bruce, guess what? They just opened up a new comedy club in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I said, that, that's fantastic. What's it called? Stand up MRI. Oh, I said, Dad, do they accept hip? He said, oh, they take hip, they take back, they take all body parts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's really tough having elderly parents, you know, constantly having to take them to the doctor. I think my doctor, father, to the doctor, okay, we're in the hospital, we're in the elevator, and this technician wheels in this machine with all these tubes and hoses. My father looks at him and says, Mister, I hope you don't hook me up to that today. The guy looks at him and says, I hope not. It's the rug cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> and after the hospital, I decided to take my parents to their favorite place, Friendly's. It's kind of ironic because my parents don't go to Friendly's to eat. They go there to complain. <laughs> <laughs> so we're sitting there and all of a sudden my mother calls over the manager. And she says, mister, it's bad enough that my toast is burnt and my eggs are runny. How come you no longer sell coffee in those nice brown friendly mugs? He said, we stopped doing that because they kept on disappearing. She says, oh my, that's too bad. I only need one more to complete my set. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have yeah. a mother with a mug shot to be in a mug thief. <laughs> oh. And my wife and I just celebrate our anniversary. 30 years of wedded blisters. Yay. <laughs> That's because all the ETHs were rubbing me the wrong way. And I have the calluses to prove it. <laughs> we actually have a very unique marriage. Each year on anniversary, we don't renew our vows. We have to contract negotiations. She gives me a performance review. But last year was tough. She said to me, Bruce, you're so disorganized. If you worked for me, I would have fired your ass a long time ago. But she gave me three months probation, took away all my fringe benefits. She gave me an F in, in loading the dishwasher. How is that possible? Where's human resources when I need them? What? This year I'm doing things. <laughs> I'm going for a third party negotiator. Maybe do under the table negotiations. I wanted to at least once bend over backwards for me. And my wife is always in business mode. Puts everything on an Excel spreadsheet. I wish she'd excel at putting out between the sheets. <laughs> and prior to the pandemic my wife was into fitness she was taking goat yoga I don't know if you know about goat yoga this is where you lay on the mat you're in the studio the goat roams around jumps on your back and lifts your ears it's supposedly very therapeutic and relaxing but because of the pandemic she couldn't do that but the other day the doorbell rang she was so excited she said Bruce come downstairs Fred and Valerie are here I came down Valerie's a yoga instructor Fred had a muscle t-shirt on. He was a goat. Next thing I know, they're in the backyard. She's on the grass. He's on top of her licking her ears. I ran out there and said, honey, I tried that two weeks ago. You slapped me and threw me out of the bed. And now you're paying a goat to do it. She said, well, he's got better technique and fresher breath. <laughs> <laughs> and one final thing, during the pandemic, I tested positive for the coronavirus. And sex was out of the 
out of the question. I was in quarantine, but in order to keep the passion alive, my wife cut up one of the Victoria's Secret's black lace bras and made masks out of them. Thankfully, she's a double deer, also to never fit over my nose. <laughs> the good news is, I, if you keep the passion alive on my end, you should see what I did with my athletic supporter for her. That's Whoa. my thing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Let's all give a round of applause to Bruce Lipsky there. You can find him on Facebook under Bruce Lipsky. And we can find him on Venmo as Bruce hyphen Lipsky dash one. So that's awesome. Thank you, Bruce. And you know that goat yoga stuff? Uh, that was around when I was growing up on the farm. We just called it, you know, helping out with the animals. I don't understand why it's become something with yoga involved now. It just doesn't, I don't understand it. I used to help my friend milk the goats and they would do everything, lick your ears, get on top of you. It wasn't yoga. It was just called doing, doing the chores. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. You know, between the farm and the city, they try to cross and it just gets a little bit weird. All right. Our next comic coming up to stage is actually a winner from my game show on Friday nights at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern called Bombing Run. Object of that game is I put three comics up, they do their five-minute sets, and I have a mysterious judge who no one will ever know about. It's always someone different. Last night, it was a ghost of Joan Rivers. <laughs> the, the week before, it was a brick wall from a famous comedy club. Uh, the week before that, it was a Mars rover robot. So it's always someone that you'll never know. But we find out who's a Joker ace and who's a bomber. And if you're a bomber, you can always come back and try again. If you're a Joker ace, you get to go on stage just like this lady here. Please welcome the stage from Maryland, Reva Riley. Yay! Well, thank you guys so much for watching. So I'll dive right in. I've had an odd upbringing. And to be honest, I was weird before I was even born. See, my dad is a great big white guy, which you could tell the second I came on screen, but my mom is actually Indian, Gujarati specifically. And my parents got married over 40 years ago. Uh, that was before interracial marriage was cool, or at least legal in West Virginia. And their marriage has produced four hybrid children. So my siblings come in a rainbow of colors. I have a brown sister with reddish hair, a tan sister with natural highlights, and a pale but dark-haired brother. They're all very beautiful, and they all look appropriately mixed race. And then there's me. I look like a hardy medieval peasant girl who survived many harsh winters. <laughs> <laughs> and despite the existence of mirrors, I didn't realize I looked like this for a long time. And that's because my mom made the fascinating decision to raise us as Indian children. And she went all out, like we're all vegetarians and we're all good at math. So imagine my shock when I got to school and no one could tell I was Indian at all. I had a full on kindergarten crisis and I realized, oh my God, am I white? Oh, sweet Ganesh. <laughs> uh, the reason I invoke Ganesh is because Ganesh is the god of overcoming obstacles. This is one of the many things I learned as the only white kid in Hindu Sunday school. My religious education was difficult at best. Like one of the most common activities that we do in Hindu Sunday school was put on skits about the various gods and I played a demon in every one. <laughs> when I was a kid, that seemed a bit harsh. You know, but as I got older and learned about history and started reading the news, I've had to wonder, were they wrong to see the only white person in the room as a threat? This has haunted me a lot this month in particular because my mom was recently the victim of racist harassment. She got a voicemail with this slur-ridden anti-immigrant, anti-Indian message on her phone. And when my mom checked in with her friends, loads of people in our town from all backgrounds were targeted with specific messages against their ethnicity. And the theme was clear, only white people could be Americans and no one else is welcome. Now, this is obviously an awful and cruel thing and frankly bizarre in its logistical complexity. Like what this mass hate crime implies is that there's a white supremacist group with a research team that looks up anyone who isn't white, which isn't obvious, by the way. Like my brown sister's name is Chelsea Riley, which is the whitest name anyone has ever had. But it was my dad's turn to pick baby names. So here we are. <laughs> 
addition to this racist research team, there must be some kind of racist writer's room to diversify the racial targeting. Like in all likelihood, there's gotta be a bunker full of KKK rejects trying to diversify their insults and slurs. <laughs> and you know, maybe it's good that white supremacists are trying to be more inclusive. You know, it's kind of wholesome in that hate crimey kind of way. Like, you know, we can imagine them. Like, I don't know what the names of the racist head writers are, but something like Bubba and Chad feels right, doesn't it? <laughs> we can all imagine Bubba and Chad curled up behind swastika themed typewriters, arguing about who gets to record which racist screeds. You know, maybe Bubba's mad because Chad has recorded the anti-Filipino message for three weeks in a row and Bubba is sick of the Malaysian beat. But at the end of the day, they kiss and make up over the N-word. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what I fear, in some sense, is did I do this to my mother? Like, am I complicit? After she got this robocall, my mom said, half joking, half serious, do I need to be scared of white people now? And it was like, you know, we should have been scared all along. All of us, even other white people. You know, I've got white cousins who will come over to my parents' house to eat my mom's delicious homemade Indian food and easily turn around to vote for the incumbent in the upcoming election. Oh, God. <laughs> it's dark, right? And one of the lessons that I've had to take away from the way I look and the advantages it affords to me is that in so many fundamental ways, we don't get to pick who we are. Other people pick for us. You know, Indians and Caucasians alike looked at me and decided I was white, a collective decision that made my life easier because it is easier to be white than it is to be brown or black. And I often feel powerless about this, but I've been trying to remind myself that it's true that other people have the power to choose who we are, but we also have that power over others. And I think we should consider very carefully what we do with it. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. My name is Reba Jothi Riley. Woo -woo! Thank you, Reba Riley. Thank you so much for that set. Awesome. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm colorblind. I, as growing up, I was in a I grew up around a lot of Hispanic people, so I didn't know the difference between white and black or Hispanic. I really didn't know it until the USA pageant uh, where Vanessa Williams won, and I, my grandma said something. I was like, what? 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 She just won. What? What's wrong with her? I didn't understand. <sighs> and that was the ripe age of eight or nine. I can't remember when she won. But anyways, tough growing up sometimes. Oh, so you can find Reva on Twitter and Instagram at Reva Riley and her Venmo is at Reva dash Riley. Thank you so much, Reva. Let's all give her a round of applause again, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. And she was a winner of bombing Run. So see, you play the game, you get to go on the show. Yay. <laughs> and speaking of which, the next comic has been on the bombing run game. And she's been on this show a couple of times. She's really cool. She's awesome. And I please welcome to the stage a woman who doesn't need any, any introduction, but I'm going to give her one anyway. Liz Frizzes. Yay! And keep it going for your host, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. This just in news. 2020 needs to raise the bar. <laughs> I just had the best day of my life. <laughs> oh. oh, they're never going to find the body. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Money can't buy happiness, but it can buy duct tape and a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I love the place I work. The motto is Carpe Vader. Seize the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> I got my midterm feedback the other day. My boss sits me down and says, Liz, you're vicious, ferocious, feisty, dangerous, violent, psycho, evil, cold-blooded, dark-hearted, and evil-natured. He noticed! <laughs> <laughs> you say so psychopathic? I say sociopathic. Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> I think we can all agree the term adequate should never be used to describe a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, though, I do need to invest in a pickaxe. I'm out here in Phoenix, Arizona. Have you tried to dig in this desert? <laughs> this is a weird place. Everything out here bites, scratches, stings, burns, or is poisonous, including your Tinder date. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I'm 50 years old. When I was a kid, we used Tinder to burn things. <laughs> Hasn't changed. <laughs> oh. See, they did an interview recently with a bunch of young ladies and said, hey, would you really date a 30-year-old man who quarantines with his mom? And the response came back, no, but we date a 30 year old man who quarantines with his wife. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I blame my generation for the social ills of this younger generation. We prided ourselves on raising children. And if you've got a 30 year old in your basement, you've succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 2020 is the year of disasters. But you notice every state has their specialty. California has its fires. Florida's got its hurricanes. Arizona gets Crayolas in the back seat. <laughs> Carpools come with a Brazilian wax. Oh. Yow! <laughs> hey, great for date nights, though, because your better half can taste the rainbow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, many people know I, I retired from the military last year and rapidly found out I suck at being a civilian. They sent us to class actually to teach us how to be a civilian. I got sent to remedial training. <laughs> Sit down with a career counselor. He looks at me and says, Liz, what are you good at? I said, killing and bombing. He said, stand up comedy. I said, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Most young comics are worried about disappointing their parents. I got to disappoint the entire Department of Defense. <laughs> 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 The worst thing about being a civilian, the women's movement is weird. They tell me we're gonna combat the stereotype of the over-emotional, irrational female by screaming through the streets with knitted vaginas on her head. <laughs> Who came up with this plan? Warner Brothers on an acid trip? I taught, I taught a putty hat. I did, I did taught a putty hat. After a while, you just want to grab it by the pussy hat and smack their skulls together to see if you can spark a brain cell. <laughs> I totally screwed up at the Baltimore Women's March. We were talking equal rights, and I suggested universal draft registration. <laughs> <laughs> I got front row seats to Pussy Riot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is my time. I'm Liz Frisius. Have a wonderful night. And please keep it going for your host, A.A. Ron. Uh, let's give a round of applause to Liz Frisius, guys. This, she was awesome. Thank you so much, Liz. You're awesome. Oh, wow. You can find Liz in Phoenix, Arizona. I think she's doing a few uh, open mics now. Are you doing actual live uh, mics? Yes, a uh, live show. I'll be at JP's Comedy Club on the 5th of November, and I will be at El Charo Hipster on the 17th of October. All right. And I will go back to the other comics. If you guys have some open mics you're doing, I will go back through and at the end. Uh, you can find her on Facebook at Liz Frizzes. Uh, she has a web website, LizFrizzes.com and Liz-Frizzes.com. And she has a PayPal account, Liz Frizzes, or Liz Frizzes at gmail.com. So thank you so much, Liz. You're always so fun to listen to. Uh, thank you. Oh, woof. Yeah, I don't know if I could go to a protest. I only protest when I don't have food. <sighs> and that's usually at home. Anyway, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. My wife cooks for me all the time. She gets me out food. Okay. And then she looks at me and goes, what's out food? It's when it's not in, it's out. She doesn't understand my terminology. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so <laughs> our next comic. Yep, that's true. I'm not kidding. Uh, we're up to our next comic. He's going to teach us a few things. Please welcome from Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, Johnson. Hey, thank you, everyone. Thank you. I uh, let me get rid of this hat. I don't want Aaron to think he's my hero or anything. Hey. Um, <laughs> I put the hat on because I got a haircut today and I went from looking like a drunk to a psychopath. So, oops, 2020, right? <laughs> <laughs> I really did look like a drunk, or at least that's what people thought. And um, it's not that I'm a drunk, it's just I'm a teacher. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the job that comes with a three drink minimum <laughs> per period. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we drink a lot, teachers. Drink a lot. It's because those sick, twisted crybabies we have to deal with every day. Their official uh, title is called principals. So, yeah. Um, I had one principal, big old <laughs> dude. Yeah, he was a big old dude. Every time he walked by, I smelled biscuits. And uh, But his name was Pillsbury, so that explained a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was a grumpy old man, so one day I tried to cheer him up. I did what TV taught me to do. I poked him in the stomach. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a new job now. So, yeah. <laughs> My curb principal, she wears those like nine inch uh, high heels, just making it easier to kiss her ass. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, um, I have a few fears in my life. It's I have a fear of snakes and people walking up from behind. So I stay away from lawyer's offices. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if a lawyer ever spooked me, um, I would quickly face my other fear, death. Yeah. Uh, someone accused me of being optophobia, which is the fear of opening your eyes. That probably explains the job offer from CNN. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. This isn't a Republican thing. Wrong place. No, it is not. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Whoops. Wrong place. Yeah, there we go. I, um, uh, Oh man, let's see where do we want to go now with that one. Hmm. I thought my parents had a bl- this one fear uh called a blutophobia, which is the fear of taking baths, but um I forgot. They're just hippies and love patchouli. <laughs> <laughs> Some people in this audience are way too young to know what patchouli is. <laughs> or hippies. Yeah. As a teacher, I'm very familiar with this um, nomophobia, which is basically um, teenagers without cell phones. So, mm. yeah. You ever see a, see a teenager with a cell phone, like walking behind them? They're so slow. It's like trying to get behind an old crippled Asian woman on the freeway. It's like, <laughs> get out of the way. <laughs> it's impossible for rednecks to have a uh, syngenesophobia. Um, very impossible, which is the uh, the fear of relatives, you know. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, 2020 is the fear of agoraphobia, which is everybody's afraid to go outside. Uh, okay, that one's not working. Put that one out. Um, <laughs> I do think I have um, chorophobia, which is the fear of dancing. Oh, no, wait, I'm just white. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I am having to lose weight right now. I mean, it's not because I'm fat; it's just because I can't see my penis. So, oh, it's starting to look like the worst sunset ever. It's like, hey, but, hey where'd it go? You know, <laughs> uh, it's hard to lose weight because I mean, you got to diet. You know, and how do you succeed at something that Oprah screws up at? You know, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I looked into this one crazy diet called a sleeping beauty diet, but um, we all know what happened to Epstein. So, whoa. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that is my time. I am B. Johnson. You can find me on all social medias at B. Johnson Comedy. Thank you so much. All right. Let's give a big round of applause for Mr. Bo Johnson. And here I thought it was BJ Onsen Comedy. BJ Onsen? BJ Onsen? Uh, no, BJ Onsen's my prison name. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure that was clear. Thank you so much, Bo. And, you're welcome. You know, I, I, I know you have a lot of fear apparently right now, and so do I. I have a fear of failing and everything in, in yes. this show. Hey, I had a fear of technical difficulties, and it happened tonight. Good on you, computer that's, and Zoom. That's called tr- that's called Trumpophobia. Trumpophobia? Yeah, the fear of failing at everything. Oh, yeah, I don't fear. I don't including, fear. Including failing. your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, yeah, like Bo said, you can find him on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under 
B. Johnson comedy. And he has a Venmo too. And it's everything's been posted up on Facebook, on different groups, on my page, on This Justin News. Hey, become a subscriber to the This Justin News YouTube channel. I do crazy stories. There's always something new. And just wait, there's a new one coming up that someone from the Hot Breath Comedy Group helped me write, uh, they write a, wrote a script and I'm shooting it right now and it'll be out shortly. Also, one more thing before I bring up the headliner, the Halloween show is going to be on Halloween. Surprise! Those people who are going to be part of the Halloween show must be in costume and has to do at least one minute of Halloween jokes or scary funny jokes. Now, I had four slots available. They're disappearing awful quick. I have one million dollars. I mean, I have one slot left. So if you want to be a part of it, you have to send me your audition video. Don't send it on videotape because I don't have a VHS player. So, but you got to be in costume for the show. And it's at eight o'clock on Halloween night. So I have enough time to scare the trick-or-treaters away. So with that being said, I want to welcome our, our headliner for the night. This lady is from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. She is an awesome comic, and we're, we're going to be laughing our, our asses off, eh? Please welcome to the stage, Monica Hamburg. Yay! Hey, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it, Hey, Ron, I, I'd like to throw my hat in the ring for your Halloween show. You need something really scary. And uh, my 41-year-old boyfriend plays Dungeons and Dragons. So that's pretty <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> I hope that qualifies. Um, so, uh, yeah, I recently had a birthday. We've been talking a lot about that, about our ages. Uh, <laughs> Liz's husband just like popped into the frame and it was, it was, it, it was like the strangest low budget music video. We're like, oh, he's the ghost husband. He's there now. Awesome. <laughs> so, <ooh. laughs> and now he's casting a spell on me. That's okay. That's try to incorporate spell casting in my life. Um, so yeah, so we've been talking a lot about birthdays and I did have a birthday recently. Uh, I turned 46. Yeah. Yay! Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you guys know it's a very significant number in numerology uh, because when you put the four next to the six, it makes me cry. Because <laughs> 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 like we have such narrow views of middle-aged women, you know, like I am middle-aged and I'm I'm still. A financial disaster. That's. Uh, I'm terrified. I'm like absolutely terrified of my financial future at this point. Because like I know this guy and he is 60 and he's sleeping in his car. Whoa. Whoa. I don't even have a car. <laughs> <laughs> to achieve my living hell. <laughs> <laughs> then I would have to have money for parking, insurance. Basically, I need a second job just to live in a car. <laughs> <laughs> the guy in his car is doing better than me, okay? <laughs> uh, I've also, uh, my apartment has broken windows like they're super super heavy and they don't actually stay up like normal windows so i have to jam a plank into them to get them to stay open i don't have windows i think what i have is a picturesque guillotine <laughs> <laughs> uh, i also have i i do i do have a noiseless fan that that's what i have um it wasn't labeled that way but uh, the sound of the fan is drowned out by construction and my oh. birthday sobbing. So. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> you think if I got empathy, I'd ever become a comic? Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that sound means, okay? <laughs> it's just awkward. Uh, I, uh, I'm like super addicted to Facebook too. Uh, I did see the social dilemma, it didn't help. Uh, but I'm super, super 
Uh, in fact, I had to get an app to limit my app usage. And the first app I got limited on was weather. Yeah, I'm taking a dangerous interest in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess they think that I am treating the weather like it's Netflix. You know, just just one more episode and I'll get to sleep. I oh. need to know if fog makes it. <laughs> uh, I've uh, I've had a lot of strange shows. The Zoom shows are like actually kind of normal at this point because I've been performing at a lot of strange things. Uh, I I had. I don't know if you guys have had this experience. I had a gig where I was the only comic at an indie music show. Mm. It's not a good position, you know? <laughs> not a good position. That is just a lot of people singing like deep songs about heartbreak. And then one person going, you ever hooked up with a roast chicken, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's more, it doesn't work. Uh, so uh, I, uh, it was just total silence. Zero. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you guys are all comics, but maybe people in 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 the audience there, uh, maybe they don't know. You want above zero. That is <laughs> laugh too much. Just just over over that. And the mic echoed, so I would say my joke. It would go through the silence and then come back and hit me, <laughs> like like some horrible comedy boomerang. <laughs> and it was the worst and uh i got off stage and i was i was shook and uh, my friend was the producer of this show so she immediately came up to me and she's like oh that was great i'm like okay thank thank you but it wasn't because <laughs> nobody laughed and she, said, <laughs> she was like no 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 they're just a music audience yeah. they didn't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> and I love believing that <laughs> that they are all watching me and they're like oh this woman is so funny if only there were a sound I could make to express <laughs> no silence it is <laughs> <laughs> silence this is the best medicine, they always say, you know? It's, uh, I mean, they are probably anti-social doctors, but that's probably what they say. <laughs> we are in lockdown again here in Montreal. <laughs> we did it again! <laughs> <laughs> Don't think Canada can't top you guys, okay? <laughs> we're getting competitive now. <laughs> So we're in lockdown and uh, I order a lot of food. It's all I can do. It's all, it's all I can think about. I just spend my whole day fantasizing about what the next meal is. And uh, so I was ordering something, but before I did, I wanted to check. It was a pizza place and I checked at Yelp and it said, uh, I ordered from here and I had diarrhea all day. I was like, whoa, diarrhea all day. Well, I'm, I'm home all day anyway. <laughs> I didn't realize my standards were that low. <laughs> but, but they are, like, because I guess that's the only thing that prevents me from just having food that makes me sick at any point. It's that it's inconvenient. That's what it is. It's that I'm always on the bus trying to bargain with my stomach, you know, like, okay, okay, no, I want what you want, okay? We are on the same page. Just, just eight more stops, but like your stomach doesn't listen. It's like, no, 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 it's now. And you're like, no, 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 seven more stops. And then, and then, you, you know, and then you guide it through it. You're like, and then we're going to go up the hill and we're just going to run up the stairs. It's going to happen. And there, and then your stomach is like, what if your neighbor talks to you? And you're like, I will ignore my neighbor. I, I will run away from them. Okay. Just please, just, just please make this work for me. Uh, but I guess if I am home all day, then I could just call up the place and be like, yes, one media Metamucil. One media Metamucil pizza. Just bring that on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just hold the peppers, throw in a plunger. It's fine. <laughs> 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 uh, 
where I'm at, guys. Shit jokes. That's where I'm at. Oh, oh am I loud? Am I loud? Oh, that's that cursing. That's fine. You're fine. You're okay, fine. okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have gotten through most of the set without saying anything cursy. And uh, that's, it's really, I don't know. You guys got to give me a cookie. That's really hard for me. I'm, I am a very evil person. Um, you can tell. Uh, the other, the one, one COVID casualty that I am actually very happy about is pop-up museums. Like, you know, the ones where they're specifically designed for people to take selfies against this backdrop. Oh my God. <laughs> I just, I just, like, they were supposed to stand in line for hours to take pictures of yourself. And that is a privilege I usually reserve just for groceries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, people, like, there's one, it's called, it was called the Nightmare Machine. And uh, what it had with like different rooms and one of them was a neon laundromat. Is that your worst nightmare? <laughs> Is it? Because I'm forever taking a surprise history exam. <laughs> I don't know any of the answers. I'm going to fail high school. And I realize I'm naked. <laughs> Is someone's fear a neon laundromat where you can't properly sort your whites? <laughs> I don't get it. But the creator, the, don't, don't worry, the creator explained in this video why she made this museum. She's like, I always say, between brunch and Game of Thrones, there's a lot of day to fill. You always say that. <laughs> that is not something that you panicked and came up with when the cameras were on you. You were like, I, there is a deep void inside my soul and that can be solved by a neon laundromat. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay, but it's, uh, there, was, uh, there was also a pizza museum. Perfect, one minute? You've got one minute? Yeah, you're oh. a little over, but you're good. I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll just finish this up. So there's a pizza museum on the site. It had, it, the site had, like a best friend, pizza is reliable, flexible and unselfish. You're putting a lot on that slice of za. I think you need more support than thin crust can handle. Uh, but that, that's bad enough. That's not bad enough. Uh, I will end with this. Uh, they actually had pizza is always here for us when we're hungry, happy or hungover. Pizza doesn't judge. What food does judge? You know? <laughs> What is your reality? Are you having brunch and your eggs Benedict goes, hey loser, what are you doing between now and Game of Thrones? <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. You've been a lot of fun. I'm sorry I went over time. Oh, all right, all right. All right, please give a big round of applause to Monica Hamburg. Yay! Woo! You can find her on YouTube. She's doing the same thing as we are on This Justin News. She's Monica, you just gotta look her up. Uh, where was it? Oh yeah, so YouTube dot com slash c slash monica hamburg so she's really easy to find that way uh are you doing any while well, you're locked down in quarantine are you guys doing any open mics at all up there? so we're not doing any any live stuff uh i am okay. doing some shows on zoom uh, my show is actually not stand up it's like a panel show or like not a panel show but like i i, I pick weird things and show people weird things no, very pg-13 just weird things on the internet not weird things uh. not me not, oh. not. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, you, you know, you, you could show me, and I'm weird. I, I, I fit, don't I? Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was awesome. And she has a PayPal account. Everything's listed on Facebook. Everybody's stuff is up there. Um, I want to go back through all the comics tonight. I want to give a big round of applause to Matt Ditto. The widow. Uh, widow Wits. I can't wait for you to change your name to Jordan. I'll just die. Right <laughs> no, what is still going to be my legal name, but yeah. But yes, uh, Jordan. Yeah. Okay. Are you doing any open mics at all? I actually am. New York City, well, while we're sort of experiencing a COVID resurgence, there are still a lot of outside open mics. I just did one earlier at the park near my house. Oh, cool. So, so they're outside, but it's not the same because the acoustics are wrong and you're right in the middle of public watching people, you know, hang out with their children and walk their dogs. Well, at least you're getting out. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait till the comedy clubs reopen and we could do it in an enclosed space. But yes, I am doing a few open mics a week. Awesome. 
And I'm going to go to Bruce next. Bruce, are you uh, doing any open mics up, up there in New York City? Once I get past this green slime here, yes. Uh, actually, <laughs> New York City. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, I'm, I'm not doing any live mics in the sense of outdoors. Uh, I am doing a lot on Zoom. I've actually done this past week, one from Australia, Japan, uh, UK, um, a lot around, around the country as well. Uh, a lot of shows, Zoom shows. I have one tomorrow night, Apocalypse Drama Party. Uh, so I'm definitely out there and it's, uh, you know, hey, this is what we have now, you know, with lemonade. What lemons you make lemonade, that's it. So you do the best you can. That's right. And Bruce, you're on, I think, next week's uh, bombing run, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, yes. So you can check out Friday night. He's going to get be against two other comments to see if you can get back on this show as the middler. That's how you win. You get out as a middler of the show of this show. All right, right now. And I hope the green blob doesn't take you over because yeah, right now it's looking kind of it's 50, 50 The green slime is over here. I don't know why, but we'll the <laughs> slime. <laughs> oh right. my gosh. So now, Bruce, how do you have time to do all that and, and star in movies also? That's right. Exactly. You like this. It's a, you know, James Cromwell, right? Yeah. Yeah. And also, I play with the Who for Peter Townsend as well. I just I just saw you in a movie a couple nights ago, but I can't remember the name of it is. Uh -huh. You you were using your other name. Exactly, probably. All right, <laughs> we're gonna go to Reva Riley. I did screw up your uh, your your social media. It's Reva J Riley. So I want to make sure we get that straightened out. Thank you for that note. Sorry about that. It is right in the Facebook stuff because I just copy and pasted. So hopefully everything's right. Are you doing any open mics out right now? Or are you stuck at home? Yeah, a lot of Zoom stuff. Yeah, there, there's a, like Maryland is still pretty locked down. So there's a little bit of live stuff for the most part on Zoom. No, that's good. So it, how's, how are the zombies there? Because everything, no one's open, they're dead. I just kind of wonder if there's any zombies down that way. They're very peaceful zombies. Yeah, they're, you know, very oh. easy to navigate. Yeah, in the whole, I would say like eight out of 10 zombies. <laughs> awesome. That's great to hear. Well, thank you so much. And now we're going to go to our other comic who was, oh, and by the way, Reva was a winner of uh, Bombing Run. And I'm going to the next winner of Bombing Run because I had a weekend off. Is Liz Frizzis. Liz, Yay, Liz! Liz! Let's, uh, let's hear about your other, let's hear about your open mics one more time. Well, I'll be at El Charo Hipster on Wednesday. I will be at the 44 with Jonathan Ponciano on Thursday. And I will be at JP's Comedy Club in a guest spot coming up on the 5th of November. Sweet. And Ooh. that puppet you got there looks so lifelike. Is that uh, your husband? Or <laughs> this is a musician. So uh, we're, oh. we're working on uh, remedial training for musicians on teaching them how to laugh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, good, good. I see you. He's gone from <laughs> chapter one, I can tell. <laughs> and he'll also be with me at Jared's Coffee House. Uh, we do a who's on first routine for the current COVID. This is my partner in crime. So eventually we'll get him lured to the dark side of the microphone. That's Ooh. awesome. Stealing that from Mrs. Maisel. Who's on first? You on a feedback mic. <laughs> 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 Bring him the feedback mic. Come on. All right. And then I'm going to that's awesome. So now I'm going to go to our next comic, the teacher of the group. Bo, you doing any <laughs> open mics? Uh, I do have one in Fort Mill, South Carolina next Saturday. Um, I believe I'm doing the open mic for virtual for flappers next Friday. Um, and Woo. The, yeah. And then I have another one coming up. I just forgot. Um, I'm just not really sure when it is. Um, a mid room show for flappers um dates to be determined so uh but go to my facebook page instagram at b johnson comedy for updates we thank you bo and i think one more time for monica she's yes she's still here yay, yay. <laughs> all right and we kind of went over this stuff you can't go out right now but it's your your show your youtube show is more of a panel show what what is it you said you talk about weird things on the internet i was kind yeah, of i talk about strange things i found on etsy uh, i talk about things i can't mention because it's pg-13 uh, i talk about uh lots of bizarre products i found uh and it's it's just super fun i have a a comedian guest and we we like I show things on screen and it's it's a blast I highly recommend it even though it's something I do which I usually don't say anything about <laughs> I'm like shh 
but uh, it's, uh, yeah, uh, you please ch check it out, youtube.com slash C slash Monica Hamburg. And uh, yeah, I'm not doing any show. I may not be doing shows for the next week or two because I'm working on like some videos with a friend, but again, not, not anything strange. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, and uh, this, I'm going back to me. Hey, hey. I want to thank everyone that showed up tonight to the show. You guys are awesome comics. I love hearing all of you. You're wonderful. Thank you, Matt DeWittowitz, Bruce Lipsky, Reva Riley, Liz Frizzis, Bo Johnson, and Monica Hamburg. I give you guys an all big round of applause. You guys are awesome people. Thank you for being part of this show. It's constantly oh, something wow. going on. Tech, tech issues, Zoom, Facebook, you name it. It happens. It's the way of the future, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and so saying that, next Saturday, there isn't a show. I have a family Halloween party till I make this basement into a maze of terror. So, yeah, I can't quite do the show while the kids are screaming and yelling that there's some mad butcher trying to get at them. So, um, but that's me. So I, I, can't, I can't do two things at once. So the next show is on the 24th. And so I, you know, just stay tuned. We'll see who's, who's on that show. We'll have at least two bombing run uh, winners on that. And we'll have some fun. So thank you for showing up. Thank you for watching and stay tuned on the 24th. Have a great night. Love y'all. Thank you. Thank you too.